So I'm Mark Michael uh, from the Illinois Bone and Joint Institute here in Chicago. And today's topic is going to be outpatient spine surgery. Um, with me, I have Dr. Templin. Please uh, introduce yourself. Hi, Kerry Templin. I'm uh, partners with Mark at Illinois Bone and Joint Institute. And we also have Dr. Reddy. Hi, I'm Deepak Reddy. I'm uh, from South Bend Orthopedics in South Bend, Indiana. So there's a real trend in spine surgery now to move a lot of these cases into the outpatient setting, specifically into the ambulatory uh, surgery centers. Um, this push is driven by um, uh, patient outcomes, um, faster recovery, uh, and also driven by insurance carriers uh, and, and insurance contracts. Um, with this trend you know, comes uh, issues related to patient selection, the types of procedures that we're doing, the length of stay, is it uh, purely an outpatient facility, is it a 23 hour observation? Uh, and then also the concern, are we pushing the envelope and are we doing things that we really shouldn't be doing on an outpatient basis? So these are kind of some of the things I wanna uh, talk about today. Um, I start with you, Dr. Templin, what, what is your experience so far with uh, this kind of shift to the outpatient realm? Uh, I think it's been a slow shift that really got going recently pretty quickly, right? I mean, I think uh, 10 years ago, there was a sort of a push for doing discectomies, outpatient, that kind of thing. And I think that was, you know, pretty, pretty reasonable. And then, but I think with more experience and more comfortability with working in a surgery center and getting people out the same day, I think the, the procedures have expanded. And so over the last probably, I mean, we've been doing fusions in an outpatient center, uh, both cervical and lumbar for probably at least the last eight years. Um, and like you said, I think it's such an important decision-making process in regards to number one, the complexity of the case, uh, the patient, uh, and basically their ability to get out same day. Um, I think the 23 hour thing is very important, but my experiences have been pretty conservative in those regards. Yep. Um, I think that, uh, you know, you're always looking at the potential pitfalls of a case before you, you know, get there. Um, but at this point, we've gone to the point of doing anterior fusions, uh, lumbar fusions, outpatient. Um, so the, you know, the experience uh, has been growing in regards to the complexity of the case. But my experience has been as we, I will not do any more than a one level lumbar case um, at this point in time, because I, I just feel like that's too hard to get the patient out. Cervicals up to two levels, I think are reasonable, but it's been a, it's been a slow build up to doing those things. Sure. Um, and you know, patient selection is really the key with all this. I mean, certainly not every patient is ideal for an outpatient spine surgery. So what considerations do you take Dr. Reddy when you're looking at a patient that you're considering doing in an ambulatory setting? So uh, certainly I think it's partly procedure based, right? I mean, as uh, Dr. Templin said, there are certain procedures that fall into the wheelhouse of your facility in your state, in your area to say, you know, how long can you keep the patient? You know, how long is that procedure gonna take you as a surgeon? Those are considerations. But independent of that, in terms of patient selection, I think it has a lot of moving parts, right? I think there's a part of it where it's based on BMI. I think it's based on comorbidities. Um, I think it depends on the, the surgery that you're doing as it relates to their medical problems. You know, I think one of the places that we as spine surgeons need to pay attention to are, you know, when we're doing these ACDFs, you know, these patients with sleep apnea oftentimes kind of slide under the radar, right? And, you know, you, it's, I'll be the first one to admit, sometimes I find out on the day of surgery, wait, why do you have your CPAP machine with you? I, I, I'm not sure I knew about that. And I think, you know, being specifically attuned to picking up on those things in clinic and, and paying attention to those and selecting whether those are patients that you might want to take to the outpatient facility or maybe you want to take to another facility um, are important. And I think if I have any questions at all, I, I think it's really important to facilitate a really good working relationship between you and your anesthesia team. And if you have any questions at all, is, is this an appropriate patient to select? You know, taking five minutes out to get a hold of the anesthesiologist and say, hey, this is what I'm thinking, do you think this is appropriate or not? Can we handle this or not? Do you feel comfortable handling this? Is real, really important, especially as you're transitioning from an inpatient to an outpatient practice and trying to figure out where that line in the sand is. Absolutely, and I think part of it too is also setting the patient expectations. You know, when I'm seeing a patient, I'm considering taking them to an outpatient center. 
I tell them, you know, I'm expecting you to go home the, the same day and these are some of the things to look out for and these are things that we'd be concerned about. And, you know, you look at the reaction and if the reaction is like, yeah, that sounds like a great idea, you know, that's the patient. Um, if they look at you like, what? Right. You know, maybe, you know, you should kind of back off on that plan for that particular patient. So you brought up a good point about them bringing their CPAP and maybe a missed diagnosis of uh, obstructive sleep apnea or maybe some other medical issues that you weren't aware of. Do you think that there are some circumstances where we might be pushing the envelope a little bit too far in shifting some of these cases to the outpatient uh, center? Yeah, I'll start with that. I, I Certainly, I mean, I think in cases where there's sleep apnea, some other comorbidity, you need to watch someone, or maybe their mobility before surgery is poor, and you need to have dedicated physical therapy to get them up and get them moving after surgery. Um, I think those are considerations. Another really important consideration for me is the use of narcotic pain medicine before surgery, what their dependence is on it, and if you're gonna be able to handle the post-operative pain control afterwards, um, because it's not a great situation if someone's on a significant amount of medication beforehand from their pain doctor and then they come have surgery um, to expect them to be able to go home on what your normal doses are and then you have to worry about those things as well. So I think all those considerations are, are really important in regards to, to getting someone to be able to go home the same day. Um, and in that regard, is it push the envelope? I think compared to where we were 10 years ago, certainly. But I think we're also um, better at dealing with some of those issues, you know, with the opioid uh, awareness at, that, at this point in time, I think we, we do better with, with those sorts of things. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, in addition to managing their pain at home, which can be difficult if they have a tolerance to opioid medications, you're also uh, at risk of them causing their self-induced respiratory depression from taking too much of these medications. Certainly. Um, especially if you're doing a cervical surgery where you're already worried about their airway. Um, when doing some of these cases, so we've talked about ACDFs, um, certainly disc replacement, uh, microdiscectomies, lumbar fusions. When looking at these cases that we're doing in the setting, do you think in terms of equipment and optimization for the procedures, you can do them just as well, or are you having to make sacrifices, or what's some kind of tips when kind of shifting from a hospital to an outpatient center? So it's a very interesting question. I think we're in this sort of golden age of spine surgery where we're getting more and more and more technological advancements that aid us in being able to do our jobs well. And I think to a certain extent, that's a little bit um, opposed by the shift to the outpatient space because all those technological advancements classically have a very large capital investment that's required. And it used to be a, that you could go to an ASC and say, as long as I have a microscope, I can do everything just as well as I could do it in the hospital. And I think as we start getting into the spaces of navigation and robotics and augmented reality, um, you know, you really have to look at your surgical practice and, and, and reflect on yourself to say, are these things that I need to do my job well? And I think if you're a surgeon that's heavily reliant or has adopted those technologies really well, you probably would answer that question, no. You'd probably say, hey, you know, without those big ticket items, I can't do the case as well as I could do it inpatient versus outpatient. But I think for certain surgeons who move efficiently and you know, have a low burden of those new technological advancements and are using traditional techniques to put their, surgery, their, their screws in or do their inner bodies, I, I think a lot of people could answer that question and say, I can do it just as well in an ASC as I can do it in a hospital, and I can do it at half the cost and I can do it faster with a lower complication rate. And I think for those selective surgeries, it makes a lot of sense. You know, and certainly that's the push from insurance carriers is that uh, a lot of the care done at an outpatient surgery center is cheaper. Uh, cheaper care, uh, lower cost, um, lower cost of the center of the implants, those kinds of things. Um, I guess kind of a predict the future type question, you know, where do you see uh, ambulatory uh, spine surgery going in the future? You think we've kind of plateaued or you think we can keep kind of growing this field and, and doing more and more types of cases out there? I think in regards to the previous point, I think we're gonna see surgery centers making some of those bigger investments. Once there's a bigger commitment to doing fusions and I, I you know, there are surgery centers that have robots that have navigation systems, that type of thing. Um, augmented reality is now in the surgery center. So I think once those, once the commitment's there, I think those things are gonna continue to grow and I think it's for the betterment of the surgery. Um, 
I think also anesthesia, uh, as you mentioned before, having a great relationship with your anesthesia and anesthesia techniques that can be used in the outpatient setting um, are, are amazing. I mean, I don't even know what my anesthesiologist does, but the patients go home with way less pain from the surgery center than they are post-op day one in the hospital. Right. And it's, it's really amazing. So I think in the future, I think it's going to continue to grow and grow. And I think once the commitments there, you're going to see those technological advancements being available in yeah, the surgery center. Yeah. And that's a good point. You know, it's the same surgeons doing the same surgery, and yet um, they seem to have less pain and are more mobile when going home as opposed to staying in the hospital. Um, just one final thing for anyone who's watching who's maybe considering switching to the outpatient surgery center for some of these cases, what kind of uh, advice or tips or pitfalls would you advise to that kind of surgeon saying, I, I think I'm ready, but I, am not, I have concerns. What, what, would, what advice would you give? Um, I would tell you, you really focus on processes. And if you can link up with somebody who's already doing it and has already you know, sort of ridden the bike or, or figured out, you know, worked out the kinks, talking to them about how they've set up their pre-op clinic, um, how they've set up their, uh, their nursing in their surgery center, how long are they keeping their patients afterwards, are you staffing appropriately for that? What are you doing for the patients afterwards? I think making sure that you iron out that continuum of care so that every phase of it is consistent with the message of saying we're doing outpatient spine surgery and this patient's going to be able to go home that same day is really important. And you know, it's as simple as if the patient calls their pre-op testing and they say, oh, I didn't know you were going home the same day, that's enough to derail the whole process. Everybody's gotta have the same consistent message and the same goal of getting these patients home safely. And I think once you do that and you, you can uh, sort of set up these systems where maybe you're calling patients the day after and checking on their pain and trying to reduce the chances of a readmission, I think all of those can really help um, someone sort of learn to ride the bike, if you will. And there's plenty of people who are doing this really well at a really high volume and really high level. And uh, most of our colleagues are very happy to share that information. Yeah, yeah, the other caveat that I would say is before you go, make sure everything you need is there, right? You, you may use a certain size curette at the hospital that you're used to, uh, you know, things if you do happen to have a durotomy or something along those lines, you need to make sure that that is all there. The worst is you get there, they say, oh yeah, we're all set for spine. I mean, I've been to places that don't have a, a Jackson table or like a spine bed and they want you to come there and you go there and you say, well, this isn't going to work. Um, so you really need to do a good overview of what's available to you to accomplish what you need to do for surgery. Absolutely. And, and I think, you know, any advice I would give a surgeon is to go visit another surgeon who's doing it and actually see firsthand how it's done, both with the surgery, with the setup, with the post-op care and, and all of that stuff. Certainly. So, well, thank you guys. Uh, this was a very good talk. And I think that we've uh, shed a lot of uh, insight and uh, information regarding this exciting new trend towards ambulatory outpatient spine surgery. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Mark.